All right, so this is chapter eight, section one. The Pythagorean theorem and its converse. Theorems A1 and A2 are Pythagorean theorem and its converse. So if you have a right triangle, it only works for right triangles. All the other triangles, not allowed. Just right triangles. Then the sum of its squares, here's the adding of the legs, is equal to the square of the length of the hypotenuse. The converse says if the sum of the squares of, of two sides of a triangle is equal to the square of the length of the third side, then it is a right triangle. So you can use Pythagorean theorem to prove your triangles are right triangles. If you don't know it at the front, you do um, you apply the Pythagorean theorem. If you get a true statement, then you can say it is definitely a right triangle. I did this when we were framing out a concrete slab in our backyard. Um, we I wanted a 13 by 13 square, and to test to see if it was um, if my sides were 90 degrees, I measured the diagonal and made sure it was equal to 13 squared plus 13 squared. Um, so I actually did use this in my real life, real world. Anyway. The equation that shows the correct relationships among the lengths and legs of the legs of the hypotenuse of a right triangle is not this one. What's wrong with this first statement here? 13 squared plus 5 squared equals 12 squared. What do you think, Zach? Uh, they put 13, which is the hypotenuse, as a leg. How do you know it's a hypotenuse? It doesn't say, I don't have a picture. It's just the longest side. Right. The longest side should always be by itself. Okay, so we'll look at the second one. Oh, yeah. That's the one that is the actual right triangle because 5... 12 are the legs and 13 is the hypotenuse. The last option is 12 squared plus 13 squared equals 5 squared. All right, so let's look at these sentences. A triangle with side lengths 3, 4, and 5 is a right triangle because 3 squared plus 4 squared is equal to 5 squared. A triangle with side lengths 4, 5, and 6 is not a right triangle because 4 squared plus 5 squared is not equal to 6 squared. All right, so let's see if we can apply this. The legs of a right triangle have lengths 10 and 24. What is the length of the hypotenuse? My suggestion is you always, when you're doing problems, always, always, always draw the picture. So if you look at her right triangle, the legs are 10 and 24. All right, so we are going to solve this using Pythagorean theorem. We start out a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I'm going to call this a and call this b, and I am going to substitute my values in to my equation. I'm going to substitute the values in. And I'm actually going to apply it. So I know what 10 squared is, but crazy enough, I do not have 24 squared memorized. So I am going to go ahead and pull up my calculator and go 24 squared is 576. And then I'm going to add these together and get 676 equals c squared. 
Then I'm going to take the square root of both sides, and crazy enough, I do not have the square root of 676 memorized. So when I take the square root, I get 26. So, and then I add, I, so the hypotenuse for this triangle is 26. All right, one Pythagorean triple is 5, 12, and 13. A triple, a Pythagorean triple is three numbers that make a perfect square. So, in this situation up here, um, 10, 24, and 26 is a Pythagorean triple. So we're going to look at 5, 12, and 13. If we multiply the numbers by 2, we get 10, 24, and 26. How do the numbers that result compare to the lengths of the triangle that we just looked at? How do 10, 24, and 26 compare to the length set? They're the same numbers. They are the same. I'm an exclamation um, And then the truth of the story is if you have a Pythagorean triple and you multiply it by anything, the entire thing, so I could multiply it by 4. And the numbers that result from that scale factor will also give us a Pythagorean triple. So you can multiply your triple by any value and get um, another Pythagorean triple. All right. <clears throat> the size of a computer monitor here is the length of its diagonal, which is also true for TVs. When you buy a 70 inch TV, it's 70 inches along the diagonal, not 70 inches from side to side. Just FYI. Um, you want to buy a 19 inch monitor that has a height of 11 inches. What is the width of the monitor? Round to the nearest tenth. So let's label our diagram. We know that our height should be 11 and our diagonal should be 19. And we are going to call our missing value B. So we start out with A squared plus B squared equals C squared. What is that formula called? Yeah. It's called the Pythagorean theorem. Yay. Okay. Then we put the numbers in, what do we call it when we exchange one thing for another? What do you think that is? Substitution. Okay. We're doing good. And then we said that 11 squared is 121 and 19 squared is 361. That is simplifying our problem. Then we are subtracting 121 from both sides so we can get b squared by itself. This is the subtraction property of equality. Or you can just say one from each side. Then we get b squared equals 240. That is also simplifying. And then we take the square root of both sides. Then we use a calculator to get 15.49. It asks us to round to the nearest tenth of an inch. Please be careful that you're rounding it correctly. Tenth is the one right next to the decimal point. So it's 15.5. All right, we're going to use the converse of the Pythagorean theorem for problem number four. We're going to identify a right triangle. A triangle has side length 16, 48, and 50. Is the triangle a right triangle? All right, so this has got to be a leg. 
this has got to be a leg and this has got to be the hypotenuse because you can only have the longest side as a hypotenuse. I'm going to draw the triangle and because it's always helpful to have a picture. So I'm going to go 16 squared plus 48 squared. I'm going to see if it's equal to 50 squared. This is just a little bit of calculator work. 16 squared is 256. Forty-eight squared is twenty-three-zero-four. The two of those added together is twenty-six fifty, and I'm just going to do it one more time. to make sure I have my numbers. And then 50 squared is 2,500. And then we do the analysis. Is 2,650 equal to 2,500? No. Not. So we can say this. It's not. Okay, so theorems 8-3 and 8-4 are Pythagorean inequality theorems. 8-3 says, just so that you can see it, it's kind of hiding in, if the square of the length of the longest side of a triangle is a greater than the sum of the squares of the other two sides. Then the triangle is obtuse. And 8, 4 says, if the square of the lengths of the longest side of a triangle is less than the sum of the squares of the other two sides, then the triangle is acute. So we're going to, without a picture, we're going to be able to see if um, a triangle is acute, acute or obtuse. So this is the way it, this it's up in English here. Here's how it looks written in math speak. In triangle ABC, C squared greater than A squared plus B squared. So triangle ABC, so when the hypotenuse is greater than the sum of the squares, you have an obtuse triangle. When the hypotenuse is less than, the hypotenuse squared is less than the sum of the squares of the legs, you get an acute triangle.